Okay, hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to go over a proof of the chain rule. I'm taking it from uh, my old calculus textbook. It was Calculus and Analytical Geometry by Addison Wesley. Um, to start off with, we're going to look at a an error calculation here, or an error estimation. So we've got the function in black here, y equals f of x. And at x naught, I've got the tangent line drawn there in red. And so what we're going to do here is we can actually use the, the tangent line here uh, to approximate the value of the function just a little ways over at x naught plus delta x. So we're going to use this point right here to estimate the value of this point right here. Now it's not going to be perfect and I'm going to do it by using the little basically the slope formula. If slope is rise over run, if I multiply the slope by the run, I'm going to get the rise and so that's going to give me that little, if you want to think of it here, that's going to be this, this f prime, there's the slope, times the distance over, that's the run. So that's going to give me that little distance right there. And I'm going to use it to approximate that, that delta F there. Okay? So, but it's not going to be bang on. It's going to be off a little bit here. So our error is going to equal the change in F. That's the thing I'm approximating. And I'm going to subtract the derivative evaluated at X naught multiplied by that delta X, that, that little bit that I'm, I'm moving up by because of my derivative here. Now, Delta F is going to be F at X naught plus delta X minus F of X naught. And then minus that approximation that I'm making with my derivative. Now, if I factor that delta F, sorry, the delta X out there, I'm going to get F of X naught plus delta X minus F of X naught all over oops, delta X. Um, minus f primed of x naught, all multiplied by delta x. And that's kind of an interesting step here because you can sort of see the derivative popping out of that at first principles. Now, we're going to call this epsilon. And so that expression is now going to be epsilon multiplied by delta x. And that's going to be my error, okay? Now, let's take a look at epsilon here really quickly. Epsilon is going to equal this f of x... Uh, not plus delta x minus f of x naught over delta x minus the derivative of the function at delta x here. So notice that what we're doing here is we're comparing basically the, the difference quotient to the derivative evaluated at that point here. And because of we know that, that the difference quotient becomes the derivative, as delta x approaches zero, well, the difference between those is going to approach zero. So epsilon should be approaching zero here. Now, based on the above expression here, I know that my error, okay, my error there, which was equal to delta F minus F primed uh, X naught, it's going to be delta X. I know that that was going to be equal to epsilon multiplied by my delta X there. And so I get this nice little expression right here. And I know that as, again, as delta x approaches zero, we know that epsilon is going to approach zero. Just again, to state it again there. So the, the difference quotient is approaching the derivative. That's, that's what we want here. So with that understanding, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at uh, the chain rule. So remember, what we're, what we're looking at here is we've got some sort of function here. It's going to be a composition of two functions. And what we're going to do here is we're going to let u equal g of x. And then y is going to equal some function of u. We're just going to split these things up in, in stages here. Now, based on what we've just looked at in terms of our error calculation, we are going to let, okay, uh, u equal g of x. We've just done that, which means u naught is going to equal g of x naught. Okay, no big surprise there, my, my initial point here, which means my delta u by error calculation is going to be g primed at x naught times delta x plus epsilon multiplied by delta x. So it's, it's the same error calculation that I had above there. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just let that epsilon, I'm going to call that epsilon 1. Because I'm going to do this in two layers here. So I'm going to have two different expressions, and we're going to keep those separate. From here, we're going to factor out that delta x. So here's epsilon 1. OK, 
okay, in our delta x there. And I know that as delta x goes to 0, my epsilon 1 is also going to go to 0, right? My difference quotient for g is going to approach the derivative of g. Now let's jump up a level here. So we've also got y. We've got y is equal to the function of f evaluated at u. So we know that delta y is going to equal the derivative at u naught. Oh, and sorry, we have over here. So y naught is going to equal f of u naught. We know that we're evaluating it at that point. This is going to now be not delta x, but delta u, because we're using u as the, as the independent variable here, plus epsilon times delta u. And to differentiate between those two epsilons, I'm just going to call that epsilon 2, because we've got a different function that we're working with. And again, I'm going to factor out that delta u to get this expression right here. And just like before, we know that as delta u approaches 0, epsilon 2 is going to approach 0. So now, though, I can take this expression right here, I can do some substitution. So now we know that delta y, okay, which is going to be f primed at u naught plus epsilon 2, that delta u I have up above I have an expression for delta u up here, so I can write that as g primed x naught plus epsilon 1. And then we have the delta x at the, at the end here, because I'm doing that full substitution here. Okay. And, sorry, I just want to make sure that I've got that written out uh, correctly there. Yeah, so there's the delta u. So now we expand this out and we get f primed u naught times g primed at x naught plus epsilon 1 f primed u uh, naught plus epsilon 2 at g primed x naught plus epsilon 2 times epsilon 1, okay? And everybody, this is all being multiplied by delta x. Sorry, that's running off the screen a little bit. I'm going to divide both sides by delta x. Uh, delta x. So I'm going to get delta y over delta x is equal to all that. And then I'm going to take the limit as delta x approaches 0. So this will be the limit as delta x approaches 0 here of this whole thing. So f primed at u naught, uh, g primed at x naught, plus epsilon 1, f primed at u naught, plus epsilon 2, g primed at x naught. And now we know that this is going to become dy by dx. This will become f primed at u naught times g primed at x naught. And we're going to fill that in a second. But epsilon goes to 0. Both epsilons go to 0. And now I'm going to make my final substitution here that u naught is going to be the same as g evaluated at x naught times the derivative of g evaluated at x naught. And there's our proof of the chain rule. I hope that I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps.